I'm just including a few cases that don't have a whole lot of information. I didn't want to make a whole long video on um, missing people that I could find very little about. So I thought I would just include them all in one video. This is Richard Thomas Lee, male, white, missing since. Or the last known date of contact with him was September the 3rd, 2018, from Grayson, Kentucky. He was 62 at the time that he was last seen. Um, 5 foot 6, 140 pounds. He is balding with a grayish beard. I'm trying to find any more stats about him. Here's the circumstances that are known. After a day on the lake, he wandered away from family members at the Grayson Lake Marina parking lot at around 6.30 p.m. He was at the playground with his wife and grandchildren, but he began walking back towards the marina, his wife and grandchildren following behind. He was a little farther ahead of them and walked towards the bathroom. His wife and son walked up to the bathroom to check on him, but he was not there. Within ten minutes of him walking in that direction, family and DNR officers were out searching the area for him. Additional officers from the Carter County Sheriff's Office and Kentucky State Police arrived within the hour and began helping to search. An emergency response team was on site that evening and searched into the early hours of the morning. They continued to search the rest of that week using search dogs, foot teams, ATVs, sonar, divers, and helicopters. Additional search team canvassed the area in the following weeks. Area hospitals and homeless shelters were contacted and searched. News stations had been running the story, and flyers had been put up everywhere in the surrounding area. And they had also shared a page about him on social media. The detective, Jeff Kelly, has not received any calls with tips or leads on this case. The searches have not discovered any clues. Richard suffers from early-onset dementia and is mostly nonverbal. He can speak, but he often chooses not to. He has hazel eyes, and he has a birthmark scar on his right cheek that is reddish in color and would be right along the base or the hairline, I guess, of his beard. He was last seen wearing a tan shirt with a design in a line across his chest. Navy blue drawstring sweat shorts with pockets and tan slip-on sneakers with white socks and a camouflage baseball cap with a yellow P on the front. This is from NBC News Dateline. 188 people still missing nine years after Dateline's Missing in America special aired in 2013. On September the 3rd, 2018, Richard Lee was enjoying a weekend with his family at Grayson Lake in Grayson, Kentucky. After getting off the boat, Richard joined his wife Leslie at the playground with their grandchildren. Seeing their father was safe, Richard's children went back to the boat. My dad knew that area and he knew the lake, said his daughter Katie. They got to the playground and my dad started walking around and every time he walked around, the circle would get bigger. So what she's saying is that the dad was walking around the playground and each time he would venture out a little bit farther. My mom would yell for him to come back. But the last time she yelled for him, he ignored her and kept walking. According to Katie, before Leslie could gra gather the grandchildren and go try to catch up with her husband, he had walked out of sight. It was at around 6.30 p.m. Richard had been pretty much nonverbal for close to a year. He did not have a cell phone, ID, or credit card on him at the time. 
State and local agencies arrived that evening to help search for him, but he was never located. An officer with the Kentucky State Police told Dateline in November of 2022 that there have been no updates in Richard's case. So many tracking dogs, helicopters, using sonar, people coming out with um, ATVs to search. They searched the water. Divers went into the water. And they never found any traces of this man. That's all there is that I could find about this man. So here is a recent case that I will include. And um, I just came upon this. Police discover a dead body and identify him as a missing Kentucky man. Lebanon, Ohio. Authorities say that they found a body that has been identified as a missing Kentucky man. Edward Wisher was reported missing December the 22nd, 2022. So just about a month before he was found. Two months before he was found. Police say he suffered from sundowner syndrome with dementia. He was last seen at the Walmart in Fort Wright, Kentucky, driving a black 2001 Jeep. Covington police say they searched a cell phone tower in Lebanon, Ohio, and found his car nearby. Police later identified him as Wisher. That's really all there is on that. I don't know what the circumstances were. Someone with sundowners is someone who has a form of Alzheimer's or dementia where they become more agitated and upset at night. In the evening time, as it begins to get dark outside, they begin to worry and stress and fret more. Um, a lot of these cases of older people, it's just cases like that where they just, you know, some people say they become confused and get in their car and drive away. It could be that they're actually having a moment of clarity where their mind is clear and and they're remembering their uh, old routines. This is the case of a public safety alert that was sent out for a 76-year-old Kentucky man with dementia. This is very it has been very recent. Morganfield, Kentucky, a public safety alert was sent to phones Friday asking people to be on the lookout for 76-year-old Jim Nicholson. He was missing from Morganfield, Kentucky, which is about two hours from Louisville. Um, according to Union County Man Emergency Management, he has dementia. He was described as 5 foot 9 possibly wearing a brown Carhartt jacket. He may be seen driving a 2016 Chevy Impala with a front license plate that says McCulley's. Officials say he has ties to Benton County, Kentucky and Evansville, Indiana. Anyone that lives along Kentucky 60 from Morganfield to Evansville, Indiana, please check your surveillance cameras. Um, Footage would have been after 5 p.m. on January the 26th. So I'm going to look him up and see if there's been any updates on him. He was found, um, according to this. Union County man found. Let's see what the circumstances were. Warren County Emergency Management says Jim Nicholson has been located. Let's see. Missing Kentucky man with dementia found dead. Union County Emergency Management, Management reported that Jim Nicholson, who Jim Nichols, who had been reported missing, was found dead with his car. They say his family is grateful for everyone who helped look for him. No details about what happened to him. He could have froze because I'm telling you we've had some pretty cold temperatures. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons Database, which is funded by the U.S. Department of Justice, more than 600,000 people go missing annually. 
Approximately 4,400 unidentified bodies are found each year. Nationwide, there are roughly 6.5 missing persons for every 100,000 people. Luckily, the vast majority of missing persons cases are solved quickly. For example, in 2021, 521,705 people were reported missing. More than 485,000 of those were resolved within the year. Here is Michael Lamb. Michael Anthony Lamb, white, Caucasian, missing from Harlan County, Kentucky. Last known date of contact, March 25, 2022. He was 52 years old when he went missing, 5'9", 160 pounds, white. Michael generally stayed at home aside from leaving to pay bills or buy groceries. He was last seen on camera at a store with a female who had been staying with him. His wallet, ID, keys, and other personal items were located at his home. He was last seen wearing blue jeans, white tennis shoes, size nine and a half, and a green jacket. Um, he had hazel eyes and a tattoo of a devil on his left bicep. One said that he was out foraging as it was spring foraging season. I guess they mean like dry land fish. Based on a tip to the family that someone saw him being put into a pond at High Splint Lake, the Harlan County Sheriff's Office, with assistance from the county's emergency management division and rescue squad, dredged the High Splint Lake, but nothing was found. This is in Everts, Kentucky, in Harlan County. We just want him to come home, says his family. This is from WYMT. This is dated March 29th, 2022. Michael Lamb, 52, from Everts, Kentucky, was last seen by his family and friends. The Harlan County Sheriff's Department was notified and a missing person report was filed. If anybody sees him or if you know anything, please contact us. We just want to know where he is. It's not like him to leave like that. He has a brother that he takes care of, and he never leaves him alone like that, said his cousin. Several leads have come in from people in the community sharing the last time that they saw him. We've received some information. We just continue to follow up. We don't have anything more at this time, says Matt Cope, Chief Deputy at Harlan County Sheriff's Office. Um... There's really very little else about him. Uh, this is Dustin B. Sexton, missing from Hazard, Kentucky. Last date of contact, June the 26th, 2021. He was 34 years old at the time of his disappearance. 5'11", 170 pounds. He was a white male with um, light brown hair and brown eyes. He has a tribal pattern tattoo with a skull, tribal pattern with a skull on his back and a right hand tattoo of a scorpion. Let's see what else I can find about him. This is from 56 News, Fox News. Uh, Kentucky State Police continue searching for a missing hazard man. Dustin B. Sexton was reported missing by family members September 11, 2021. I, I don't get how there is just, there's some of these cases, there's so little information about them, it's insane. I mean, at least tell us some circumstances. Where was he last seen? What was he doing? Who was he with? You know, uh, what people don't just say, okay, that was the last time I ever saw that person. Kentucky State Police Post 13 and Hazard is continuing its search for a missing 
Perry County man life saying July the 19th, 2021. Now, in the other report, he was not reported missing until September 11th. So, no one remembers seeing him from July the 19th until September the 11th. William Cross from Whitley City in McCreary County. Last known contact, May 19th, 2018. He was 29 at the time that he disappeared. He would be 34 today. He was 5 foot 11 and weighed around 175. He was a white male. His last known whereabouts were Whitley City. He was last seen on May the 18th, 2018. He was dropped off on Williamsburg Street in Whitley City, Kentucky. He was last talked to on the phone Friday night around midnight. He said he was walking and in the woods. We are assuming in the last area he was seen. The call was disconnected and no one has seen him since. He has tattoos on his arm and neck and no description of what he was wearing or anything like that is um, from Pulaski County. Otis S. Lee, Asian male, last seen January the 26th, 2014 in Somerset, Kentucky. He was 33 at the time of his disappearance. Uh, he was 5 foot 6 and weighed 160 pounds. Uh, black hair, brown eyes, and no known information about him. He was last known to be driving a 2012 Hyundai bronze in color with the license plate P4906060. Illinois license plate. And there's nothing more on this man. There's one article where he is included as a as three people missing from Pulaski County. Pulaski Countyans missing for three years are now listed on the Name Us database. Um, the other two are women. Let me see if there's any information about him here at all. Otis S. Lee has been missing since January the 26th, 2014. He was 34 when he was last seen. He is Asian or Island Pacific Islander. Um, Cecil Edward Burkhart, male, white, Caucasian. Last seen July the 1st, 2016 from Manchester, Kentucky. He was 30 years old at the time that he went missing. Uh, 5 foot 10, 170 pounds, brown hair and green eyes. He has three fingers missing down to the knuckle. He has a tattoo on his back and on his upper and right, or on his upper right and left arms in the bicep area. It doesn't give a description of the tattoos. And let me look him up and see if there's anything more about him. This is the reason why, this is one of the reasons why I decided to do these videos on these people in one video instead of several different ones. Because there's so little information on these people. And it's sad really when you think about it because these were somebody's family members regardless of what their circumstances might have been. This is from Unsolved Appalachia. This was dated March 21st, 2021 by the user Riddles in the Dark. If something has happened to him, I would really like to know so we can at least give him a proper burial. On July the 1st, 2016, 30-year-old Cecil Burkhart was dropped off in Manchester, Kentucky by his brother Jeff. Cecil had managed to acquire some work doing odd jobs in the area, and Jeff was supposed to return to pick him up in a couple of days. 
According to this article released by WYMT in December of 2016, Cecil was last seen on Sadler Road near Route 11 in the Oneida community of Clay County. Cecil may have been walking on Route 11. I don't know much about Cecil, although I did manage to speak briefly to one of his close friends. They described a man that was loved by his family and said it was completely uncharacteristic of him to go days without calling anyone. That's how they knew something was wrong. Sadly, the details of his disappearance are limited. I would really like to find out who he was working for at this time in the Oneida area, who he was with and who he was staying with. What kind of area is it that he was last reportedly seen? As far as his friends and family know, he didn't have any enemies. Cecil's family have heard rumors about his whereabouts, but as far as rumors go, that's all they are. There hasn't been anything definite regarding what happened to him. The only thing that they know for certain is that his family and friends miss him dearly and want answers. If you are from the neighborhood where Cecil was last seen, could you possibly have witnessed something and not even realized it? It's completely possible. They say that his brother dropped him off in Manchester. And he said that he had some work doing some odd jobs. Is it possible that he did these odd jobs or maybe he got paid and or maybe he didn't even do any odd jobs. Maybe he showed up and nobody was there and they told him they didn't need him or whatever. Is it possible that he tried to hitchhike back home? Did he have a cell phone? It doesn't say that here. I would ask that question. Um, could someone have picked him up to give him a ride and something could have happened to him in that way? Here is another article about him from Q95FM. According to an article from WYMT, family members of a Clay County man are seeking answers from the public. Cecil Edward Burkhard, Burkhart, also known as Seabug, was last seen in the Oneida community. He, he was last seen in the Oneida community. He was there to do some mowing and mechanic work in July. 2016 and has not been seen since. <clears throat> Burkhart's aunt Gloria Collins has heard rumors but trying to stay hopeful for his safety. The next missing person um, is Joe Merle Puckett. He's been missing since May the 1st 1985 from Paducah, Kentucky. He is classified as endangered he was a white male, born June 28, 1969. He would be 53 today. He was 15 years old when he went missing. At the time, he was 5 foot 5 and weighed 120 pounds. Um, Joe had made at least one suicide attempt prior to going missing. He had brown hair and green hazel eyes. He has scars on both arms on his wrists from self-inflicted cuts. He has multiple homemade greenish colored tattoos, including the word mom and a cherry on his shoulder with the word thriller and a heart with an arrow through it on his right hand. The details of Joe's disappearance. He was last seen in Paducah, Kentucky on May the 1st, 1985. He went to the BFW on Washington Street where his mother worked and borrowed $20. They got into a disagreement and he left. He came back 20 minutes later and gave her $10 and left again. He was never seen or heard from again after that. Um, but the thing that I read about this guy was that nobody reported him missing for a long, long time after this. Um, 
it could be also when when we hear that no one reported him missing it could just be that at that time the mother or someone in the family may have called the police station and reported that they had not seen him but reports may have been taken differently at that time and if this kid had been into some trouble and things like that in his past sometimes the police don't always take those things seriously I've talked about that on here many times before. They should take it seriously. They should just say, okay, regardless of what the situation is, let's look into it for the sake of the family, if nothing else. So here is just a little bit of information about him. It is believed, and I don't know who this came from. I don't know if this was something that maybe he had talked about to family and friends. But it just says that it is believed that he hitchhiked to Knoxville, Tennessee. His disappearance was not reported in 2019 by his half-sister. If you have any information about his location, please contact Kentucky State Police Post 1 in Mayfield, Kentucky at 270-856-3721. Um, I don't know the circumstances why anyone would not report someone missing, but like I said, how do we know, you know, how do we know if there was ever anything, um, his clothing and things of that nature were unknown, even though his mother had, had said that they had had a disagreement that day she would have probably noticed what he was wearing and did anyone else at her job where he had come to visit her did did anyone else there notice you know what he might have been wearing and this is from missing persons and human trafficking group on facebook um, help find me and it's basically the same thing it just gives a description of him. Um, he had been known to hitchhike around the Paducah area and down into Knoxville. So that's why the family believes or the, that it's believed that he may have hitchhiked again. The next missing man case is Eddie Carl Burden, 67. He was reported missing November the 2nd, 2012. His last known location is unknown. He was 5 foot 9 and weighed around 200 pounds with blue eyes and graying hair. Um, there's very little else on him. I'm going to look him up on here. This is from the Uncovered website, Missing Eddie Burden. Missing person, he was an Air Force veteran, and his last known contact was at the VA hospital in Biloxi, Mississippi. The circumstances surrounding his disappearance are unknown. Um, and that's really all there is about him. I've talked about this a lot. I know y'all hear me, you know, <laughs> repeating myself, but some of these people, they just do not come with the same you know not every person who goes missing or who kind of just walks off and is never seen they don't get the same attention sometimes they don't have family that really think that it could be a foul play or it could be a, a life-threatening situation they just think they want to be left alone they'll reach out when they're ready and other times, they just don't really have anybody. Um, when we hear cases about, like, this um, Puckett boy, this Joe Merle Puckett, these younger people, they do get a little bit more attention than the older men and women that go missing. But I think that we are so quick to assume when it's a young person that it's a runaway. And it could be that he did hitchhike to Knoxville. Maybe he had done this before 
and thought he would just turn around and come right back home. But it could be that he came upon the wrong person that picked him up and gave him a ride. Because, you know, we do hear so much about the serial killers across the country. Paul C. Sigmund, 38 years old of Grayson, Kentucky. Now, Grayson is more in the eastern part of the state. It's, I, think, I think it's in Carter County. He was reported missing December the 3rd, 2014. He was last seen December the 1st. He walked out of a residence, that's all it says. Six foot one, 175 pounds, with blue eyes and brown hair. If you have any information, please contact Kentucky State Police, Post 14 in Ashland, at 606-928-6421. The Kentucky State Police in Ashland is seeking the public's assistance regarding the disappearance of Paul Clifton Sigmund, who has been missing since December the 1st, 2014. Kentucky State Police received a missing persons report on December the 3rd. It was reported that Sigmund left on foot from his house and was last seen in the area of Stump Road, Stump Run Road in Grayson. He was 30 years old at the time and 6 foot tall with 170 pounds. He was last seen wearing a blue hoodie and blue jeans. Tax returns renew police search for a missing man. This is from 36 ABC 36 WTVQ, Ashland, Kentucky. This is dated April 14, 2015. State police have renewed their search for Paul Clifton Sigmund, who has been missing since December the 1st of 2014. Police say on February the 24th they received a report that Sigmund's mother, 48-year-old Sabrina Sigmund, had attempted to, case a tax, to cash a tax return check in her son's name. Police began investigating and discovered Sigmund's mother had forged both state and federal taxes for her son as well as receiving his tax return checks. Police obtained a search warrant and an arrest warrant, and they went to her home. They found an active meth lab, along with materials used to make meth. She was arrested on several charges. Paul Clifton Sigmund remains classified as a missing person. Well... I would say that the mother has to know more because if he worked and he filed taxes and she knew that he was going to file taxes and she knew that he wasn't going to file them wherever he might be, then that would tell me that she believes that he is um, not coming back. Sabrina Sigmund, this is from the Missing Persons Cases Network. April, August 4th, 2019. Sabrina Sigmund has heard a lot of rumors about what happened to her son. I have heard that me and Eric cut him up and fed him to the hogs, she said. Everybody called him Cliff as she spoke about her son. She is brutally honest about her son's use of drugs and the fact that he was cooking up a batch of meth in his home just before he was last seen. Cliff and his brother Eric had a fight. They got into a little headlocking thing and Eric pretended he called the cops. Cliff was doing drugs and he was afraid he would go to jail, so he just took off. They have gotten into these types of fights before the two brothers. Typically, Cliff would leave their home in Iron Hill for about 30 minutes and then come back. This time he didn't return. She said that she and other family members began driving up and down the road calling out for him thinking he might be hiding in the woods. Among the multitudes of rumors, 
family members and friends tend to believe a report that Cliff was seen getting into a black car similar to that of a vehicle known to be owned by people he took drugs with. Sigmund says she is sure that Cliff was on drugs at the time and that he had drugs on him at the time. She believes someone robbed him and killed him. She she is certain he had methamphetamine with him because he was that was the cause of the fight between he and his brother. We know he was making it at home or it caught him and that's how the fight started. Later she added he was making meth. There was more to be made, but we know he had meth on him. Cliff failed to show up for a job at a local tire and repair shop on Monday morning. He never missed work, she said. Nine days after he went missing, a local television station reported about the case. They turned their attention, the police began to turn their attention to the mother and the son. They was really mean to me and my son, she said. We were both suspects. Sigmund says she and a small group of volunteers have walked many miles to find her son, although she does not dare search for his remains alone. I can't search for him alone because if I find him, they're going to think that I knew where he was at. Largely based on reports that investigators have looked deep into three wells in the county, along with rumors which specify which well that his body may have been dumped. Volunteer Angela Mulinex has been involved in the effort to find Cliff since the first search is began. She never met him, she said, but she is concerned about his personal life. Um, she understands people have reasons to withhold information, and she believes that that's what's going on here. Please Please know you can report and remain 100% anonymous. I don't care about what you know. I just want to be able to put closure to this, and he deserves to be laid to rest. Um, and that's all there is on that story. This That's basically it. That's, that's just a few missing men stories. That I wanted to share with everybody and I hope you enjoy watching them. Thank you.